Okay, so in this next video, we're going to look at my absolutely one of my very favorite features of the new Batwoods 2023 is the big improvements to doors and windows. We've got two massive improvements here. Um, basically, we've got interactive door resizing and window resizing for placement and uh, design. We also have incredible new improvements for the folding uh, side of doors and windows as well. So I hope you enjoy the video. And if you're like me, these are things that I've wanted for a few years in Vectorix and they're all there now. So make sure you start using them in your new projects. See, I've got a kind of wall here with uh, a few different types of doors shown. Um, let's have, have a look at those in 3D. So you can see I've got a three panel, a four panel and a five panel. Now, a couple of things that are really nice here. Um, if you do want to, by the way, we can select these and we can show them open at different angles. So if I go say 80 degrees, uh, you won't notice that that won't affect the 3D right now. But if I go show 3D open, then that will actually show them open. I really like that. That's good fun showing that with the client, uh, the different sort of opening angles there. So let's do 90 degrees. Let's just try that. Yeah, completely open. And you will notice that's the same in uh, top plan as well. So that representation. By the way, though, if you do want them uh, closed in, should we say the 3D view, so just turn 3D open off, but then you can actually go into here and say 45 degrees open, for example, to show those sliding doors open. Excellent. So that's really nice on the uh, sort of opening itself. So what I'm going to do, hold down the command and the Alt key, uh, and this is basically a really nice little command which will give me the magic eyedropper called create similar object. Okay, and this will basically just set the class. So I'm going to say no on that business for a moment. I'm just going to draw in a new wall here. What I'm going to do is just pop over to my walls file. Um, now, if you know my channel, you will have seen my uh, lovely library of walls, which I sell. Um, this has got some really nice uh, different wall types in and different sort of textures. Now, these are all styled walls, not only uh, a lot of walls that look fantastic in plan. They have great textures built into them as well. I've added quite a few more recently as well. Um, so if I do want to, I can select a bunch of these. Let's select a few of those wall types. Let's get a couple of those as well. And we we'll simply copy them. Going to go to my project here and let's basically just click and paste those into the project. Um, I always like to just so basically I can line them all up and get myself a nice equal spacing as well just to kind of get those wall types lined up in my project. Fantastic. So now um, what I can do is let's duplicate the wall type, but I don't want to draw it with the doors in just now because I want to show you how this works. So I want to basically hold down the command and the alt key and get the eyedropper with the star on. Uh, let's just say now on that one for a second and draw in a brand new wall type. And then what I can do is just use my eyedropper tool to match and set those properties very, very rapidly. So you can see, let's just try that one more time. Uh, let's set this nice timber cladding wall here. Look how rapid this is in terms of sort of trying out different wall types. So I really like this stone one. That was one I used on a project of mine and it's something that I can reuse often. Okay, so what I want to show you uh, just once again is how fantastically uh, capable this wall type or door type creation is. Um, so what I'm going to do once again is use the uh, create similar object command. Now, if you do want to know where that is, just right click and you'll notice it here, create similar object, and then you get the, normally get a little reminder so basically this allows me to immediately basically draw in or drop in a door type. And what I can do, I can either just drop it in with the sort of first mode you'll notice and it just basically drops in. Or if I do want to, I can use the insertion mode and basically drag in the size I want. So let's make these four or 500 and put those in. You'll notice still three panel at the moment, so that's cool. Um, I can obviously resize, which is wonderful. Let's take those out to, um, let's go to five meters. Okay, but now I just want to modify the type again. So I'm gonna go for a five panel. And it's just so flexible and we've got so much control. I really like the way we can show uh, the markers showing which way those markers actually open, both on the exterior and the inside. You can put those in a class as well if you want to hide that class uh, to turn it off in your drawings. So we've got incredible flexibility uh, for door creation and window and things like that as well. And let's just drag those down to oversize them slightly and just look how wonderful it is to be able to kind of resize. So folding doors in Vectorworks and folding windows Absolutely amazing now. I mean, I don't really think there's much limit in terms of how big we can go. Let's go 
10 meters <laughs> apart from the fact that would actually cost quite a lot of money and let's see how many let's just stretch the wall out and let's just see how many panels we could actually put in there so let's go for it 10 okay and actually what's nice is all five are opening one way but we can easily go five paneling open one way now and five panels opening in or out the other way as well for the right leaf. So it's very, very clever the way it shows. Let's just show them all opening uh, inwards. Let's go inwards to both sides. You can see it's just absolutely fantastic. So there's so much control uh, and so much kind of like detail that you can do on the new bifolding doors and windows in VetDoX 2023. Okay, so in this part of the presentation, I want to talk about some of the architectural features that are new in 2023 that have made some of the bigger difference to my workflow. And I'm going to use a real project that I've been working on um, for a small little kind of new, but kind of bungalow really, uh, a single story dwelling. Um, but you can see it's quite a contemporary one. This is actually the option that got submitted for planning. Um, but I've also in here also got the original option. Um, so I like to do a few different options for the client and sort of, you know, the early stage of design. So we'll show you some of the drawings in a moment. Um, but let's get on to some of these new features. Now, I absolutely love this feature and it's definitely one that I was looking at from a few years ago. So let me just switch back to my Octet workspace. I was uh, doing some landmark training earlier today. And basically, I love the way that you can just switch the different workspaces in Vectorworks. Personally, I use Design Suite. Um, so that means I have Architect and Landmark as well as Spotlight as well. And I can just sort of switch back between those workspaces as I need to. And each one of those is an enhanced workspace I've created over the years that I do share with my clients. So let me know if you're interested and I can help you with that. Okay, so let's go to the building shell and look at the doors and windows. Now they look very similar, but the big difference is you'll notice that there's now three modes, not two. So the first mode is just to kind of place in the wall as it would normally be. Let's just place one of those and you can see it will kind of drop into the wall. The second mode is basically placed by reference points. Now it might be easier if I just flick to top plan to do this. And you can see that what I can basically do is place a reference point and basically choose which insertion mode I want. You can just about kind of see the window there. And then when I click, I do get the opportunity to actually type in the distance. Okay, so that's really cool as well. But none of that is actually new. The new feature is the ability to interactively resize doors and windows. So if, for example, if I just kind of pop a new wall in here by copying this one here, let's just be a brand new wall over here just so you can kind of see how this works. So what I'm going to do is go to my uh, door or window tool. Let's go to the window first. And I'm going to go to this new interactive sizing mode. Now, if you're working in top plan, it's pretty straightforward. You just basically draw the opening size you want. And at the moment I can see uh, my class is a bit wrong, but don't worry about that. That's just why they're coming out black. But you can see basically I've drawn those windows immediately using that class. Let me just change the class of those. Let's put them in my window class using my filter there and hopefully they'll change back to normal color. Brilliant. Okay, so now I know that, let's actually uh, right click and basically go to activate class. So that will set the class to be that for the next one I do. Okay, so watch this in 3D. So what I'm gonna do is basically use my eyedropper tool, okay, on my workspace, I've double click E to bring up the settings. And I just make sure that I tick plugin parameters, which means that I can actually match the settings of, for example, this window here. However, when I go down to my window tool now, I can still use this mode and you'll notice that very helpfully it's actually got a line at sort of 2100 above Z height. So look at this, I can interactively draw windows using basically physical sizing in 2D or 3D and I think that's absolutely amazing. Now if I do want to match them I can just click the eyedropper tool and drop onto there to match those back to that style. Okay, but you'll notice that it's very easy if I want to click on the window. I want to keep the style, but I want to make it larger. So essentially, I can just drag and now stretch this window to whatever opening size I wanted. 
So it becomes very easy for me to kind of work with this particular style. Let's just do that one more time. I drop from there to there to match the style. And rather than having to type numbers in, which was the sort of old fashioned way, which is fine, you know, that works really well um, for accuracy. When you're designing, you sometimes just want to kind of interactively resize something. And you can do this in plan and elevation, obviously you can kind of match up and use things like multiple views as well. But how nice is this? It's extremely interactive. Um, so I really, really like this new feature. So <clears throat> let's have a quick look at this, um, for example, in terms of uh, doors. So again, let's just use a different wall type here. So I'm going to go over to my uh, magic eyedropper. And if you do want to know how you do this, basically just right click and it's called Create Similar Objects, this one here. And it'll give you a little dialogue which reminds you of the shortcut there. So I can suppress that now. The only problem is, just watch out, it does set the class to be the wall exterior, which is fine. Um, but do be aware of that for next time. Let's go and draw another little wall here, just out in space. Okay, so now I'm going to work my doors. So I'm actually going to set that class to door before I draw this time. And I think we'll just go doors main. Great, okay, so off I go to my door tool. <clears throat> Again, you can see the different modes here, but if I go to the interactive mode, you'll now see that I can basically just tab in, let's do a 2400 high door, drop it in, and let's do a normal 2100 high door, and so on, and kind of lock into those different sizes. Now, in terms of the door type, as I've said, I can use my eyedropper tool to match and copy across. And that's extremely fast in terms of sort of matching the style of the door. But if I want to, I can now resize. So let's just do a couple of things. Firstly, I can drag it across in 3D. But I'd like this to be a really nice set of big doors. So I'm just going to drag it out to be, say, five or six meters. Let's go six meters. And I might need to make my wall a bit longer here. Let's just stretch that out. But you can see we've got a really nice big set of doors here. Now what I can do now, which I also absolutely love, is go into the settings by double clicking or clicking on my options here. And essentially, now we've got absolutely amazing capabilities, not just for uh, sliding doors, but also for folding doors. And this is a really nice new feature. 2023 now enables you to do multiple panel sliding doors and you can see so let's have five leaves there and one leaf that side um, it's also very nice how you, what you can do is go to the folding door configuration and you can basically say what the passage leaf is here so i.e which door is it going to be the one that opens so there's all sorts of different options that you can have a look at um, and you can kind of change all the different swings and things. But let's just go ahead and do that and have a look at that sliding door. Now, I really love the fact you can also change the opening angle. Now, let's just flip it around so it's opening the other way. Ah. So extremely easy. Um, a final killer feature that I really love um, is the fact that you can actually show this open in 3D. So just to go to the visualization section, as well as showing it in... Uh, plan you can just close kind of show it open as well let's just show that open can you see those sliding doors so there's a lot of flexibility with both sliding doors now and folding doors so 2022 was all about the fold uh, sliding doors 2023 the bifolds and folding doors are absolutely incredible so this will make a big difference uh, by the way it's not just uh, folding doors but it's also windows as well so if you do go into general settings, you'll notice that you've got a whole bunch of folding windows. And again, really the same capabilities as you have with the doors. So really fantastic capabilities for the interactive doors and windows, but also beyond that, the folding doors have been massively extended. And this is something that I use all the time in my projects. So...